Hi, I'm Bruce Busby, president of Roots Magic, and in this short video, we're going to talk about saving task filters. Now, the tasks are extremely powerful in Roots Magic. Let's go ahead and hop over to the tasks page by clicking on tasks over here. The tasks allow you to uh, enter and keep track of things that you need to do. Uh, so if you have a particular place you need to do some research, you can go in and create a task. If there's uh, a de uh, end, of, end of line person that you need to work on or brick wall, you can go in and create tasks for those people. And then you can do things like group tasks into folders, or you can come in and just edit a task. You can add, um, you can add media to tasks or sources or addresses, repositories. You can assign tasks to particular people in your file. So you can basically link your task to almost anything in the program. Now, what makes it most powerful though is the ability to filter these tasks. So you might enter thousands of tasks, you know, for everything you can possibly think of, but there comes time when you want to only see a certain set of tasks, you know, the ones that are applied to a particular uh, a particular problem or a particular uh, thing that you need to do. And so let's go ahead and hop into the options button right here and we're going to select filter tasks. Now to filter tasks, there's all sorts of ways. I can filter based on the content of the actual task. So that's basically these fields over here on the right. So, you know, filtering by the start date or the end date or the last date you edited on, filtering by uh, what is what you've entered in the goal or the details or the results, uh, filtering by the status or the priority, basically any content you can filter by. So I can go in and say, uh, don't filter by start date. Now these are the defaults, don't filter, don't filter, don't filter. But if I want to filter, I can say only filter, uh, only show me tasks that have no start date or show me tasks that have a start date of something in particular. And that can be a range. So you can say, only show me tasks with a start date of uh, between uh, 2010 and 2012. Okay, so you can do that. You can do the same type of thing with end dates and edit dates. Your details, you can say, only show me tasks where the details equals, in other words, exactly matches whatever I type here, or where it contains whatever I type here. Same thing with results. Okay, I can also do the same thing with reference numbers, uh, task types. I can, I can tell it to only include ones that are a certain status or only a certain priority. So those are ways of filtering based on task content. But you can also filter your tasks based on what they're linked to. And this is where it really gets powerful. And so let's go ahead and do a couple of those. I'm going to go ahead and add a filter based on links. And I can say, uh, only show me tasks where uh, that are attached to a particular person, a family, an event, place, place detail, name, source, citation, address, repository, media, folder, or association. So you can see almost anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a link filter for a person, and I'm gonna select that person. And I'm going to pick Harris Leroy. And I'm gonna pick Leroy Leander, select him. Click OK. And so I now have uh, a filter right here based on uh, tasks that are linked to Leroy Leander Harris. I click OK, and there they are. It's filtered them down. There's four tasks that are linked to Leroy Leander Harris. Now they might be, these might be linked to other people as well. And, and you know, in fact, if I look at this one right here, I can see it's used in three different places. If I click on it, I can see it's linked to Leroy and it's also in a particular folder. But this could be linked to dozens of other people as well. But all I'm interested in are the tasks that are linked to Leroy Leander. Okay, now if I wanted to modify this filter, I just go back in and I say filter tasks and it still has the same filter that I was using. And I'm gonna add another one and I'm gonna pick another person. So I'm gonna pick Marshall, no, need a comma there. 
okay, Marshall Harris. And I'm going to click OK. And so now I'm filtering. I want tasks that are linked to Leroy or Marshall. So when I click OK, you'll see there's one extra one. There's Marshall. Now, let's say I wanted to only see my highest priority ones. I don't care about these that are priority six. I only want like the priority one and two. Well, I can go in here, filter the tasks. And this is where I can want to filter on content. I only want to show tasks with a priority of at least two. So priority one or two, that's all I care about. And I could filter by other stuff if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it at this. And now I have these, these two tasks because I filtered it based on those two people, but I only want the highest priority ones. Okay, now if I used, were to use this particular filter a lot, this would be a pain to go in and enter it over and over every time I needed to use it. So what I can do is once I've created this filter, I'm gonna go into the options and I'm gonna select saved filters. And it's going to bring up, I already have one called highest priority, and but I want to create a new filter right here and I'm going to say new and you'll see that when I create a new filter it already has the one I've just created so it, it's linked based on those two people or filters based on those two people and high priority so I don't even need to make any changes I could make changes here if I wanted uh, but I'm going to go ahead and click OK and now I'm going to enter a name for this saved filter and I'm going to call it Leroy and Marshall high priority. You can call it whatever you want. Okay, so now I have Leroy and Marshall high priority. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now I can come back in here and let's go ahead and clear the filter. So now it's showing everybody again. It's showing our, our, every task again. Ta all the tasks are being showed, shown. Now if I wanted to use that filter again, instead of going in and clicking on filter tasks and typing in and selecting those people and that, I just go to saved filters. I pick Le Leroy and Marshall high priority and say apply the filter and there we go. I've just done that, uh, filtered my database based on what could be a very complex uh, filter just by selecting it from a list. Now I could also go in here to save filters and I could say highest priority, pick that one and apply that filter. And you can see what that is. It looks like it's, it looks like it's all priority one. If I wanted to see exactly what it is, I can go in and I can say edit. I can highlight, highlight highest priority and click edit. And you can see, yes, it is priority one, but it also has this right here, details. Um, it's only including ones where, where the detail contains the word the. And so when I apply that, if I apply that one, then it narrows it down even more. It shows it, you know, these, if I select these, it's only going to include ones that have the word the in it. Okay, so I can go back in and save filters, go back into Leroy and Marshall, apply it, done. Now, I can also, if I want to rename it, like if I wanted to rename this one, which was just highest priority, um, oops, I don't want to edit, I want to rename it, highest priority with the. Okay, so since I edited, edited that filter and put that, uh, the word the in there, I can change the name of it so that when I select that, it applies that particular filter. Now, if I, if I stop needing a filter, like if I don't need highest priority with the anymore, I can just highlight that and click delete. It asks if I want to delete it, I say yes, and now I've gotten rid of that. So I can, I can keep my task filters uh, list down to a reasonable level uh, by just deleting the ones I don't need. Okay, so that's how to be able to save filters for your tasks so that you don't have to go in and re-enter the same filter over and over and over again. I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.